we were sitting at our team dinner and I was like, uh, Adley, how long have you been meeting the starting pitcher at the, at the foul line after the inning? He's like, uh, I don't know, probably since like sixth grade. I'm like, what sixth grade? He comes up to me right after the meeting at four o'clock and he goes, Hey, Gib, uh, if you don't want me to meet you at the foul line today, I, I won't. I just want to know what you want me to do. I was like, Adley, I need you to be yourself, dude. If you want to meet me at the foul line, just meet me at the foul line. I'll, I'll get over it. We'll be all right. Just understand that if I give up a homer and a few runs, I might walk right past you. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 209 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And let's head out to the place that's got the best team in the American League, the Baltimore Orioles, who are actually on the road. They're up in Boston this weekend. We are joined by their winningest pitcher in the 2023 season. Hello, Kyle Gibson. It's good to see you again, man. How are you? Chris, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So as I mentioned, you're in Boston. Uh, you have spent the balance of your career in the American League. How does Boston rate as a road city for you? Uh, you know, we were just talking about this uh, just yesterday, actually, on our off day. I think this is one of my favorites. Uh, Fenway is my top road stadium, I think. Um, <clears throat> just had a couple outings that have kind of helped add to that uh, magic a little bit. Um, and then I just really love the tradition. I like being able to, you know, look around and see something that's been there for a really long time and a lot of really, you know, really good baseball players have played there. And then Boston just has a, a different feel. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily a big city guy most of the time. Um, so when you can walk, you know, across the street to, to Newberry Street and, and be kind of like what feels like a small city in a big city, I kind of like that. All right. So do you get out and go, like you won't pitch in the series this weekend? So what do you do? Do you like to walk around the city when you've got a night game and just kind of visit, even though you've been there a bunch of times? Yeah, yesterday we had our big uh, team fantasy football draft just before kickoff. So we oh got my. that taken care of. Yeah, that was a fun time. Uh, so we got that taken care of on the off day. And then today uh, just went for a short little walk to get a coffee um, at a place here close to the hotel. But yeah, Newberry Street, there's so many awesome places to either eat or you know, if you want to look and window shop, you can. Um, I've got a breakfast spot that I'm going to probably go to tomorrow. I didn't get to today, but Mike and Patty's, they just, it's like a hole in the wall, little house that they've turned into a restaurant. I think they've got like three seats on the inside, um, but it's right next to the technology school. So you grab your sandwich, you go sit on the curb and you, you eat your breakfast sandwich. So do you bring a teammate or do you like to chill by yourself when you go? I try to show teammates uh, some spots. You know, we got a really young team. So we got a lot yeah. of guys who, uh, who know nothing about some of these road cities. So, <laughs> trying to take some guys around and, and show them a few spots because, you know, to me, I mean, everybody's different, but to me sitting in the hotel for, you know, the six hours or five hours from the time you wake up to you go to the field is just, it can be pretty tough. I mean, you can utilize that time and talk to your family. Uh, you can play some video games and kind of take your mind off things. But um, to me, I like getting out and seeing some things. And um, as a young guy, I know for me, I had guys like Suzuki, Pelfrey, um, you know, Phil Hughes, those guys, you know, showing me around to some places. So, you know, follow them around to some of their favorite places. And now I'm trying to do the same. Wait, hold. Are you a 35 year old father of four gamer? <laughs> uh, no, not a gamer. Not a okay. gamer. I don't, have, I don't have any time for that. <laughs> All right. No, I didn't think so. With four kids, there's no, no way in heck that's happening. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> by the way, this is the closest I've ever heard for a team that has their fantasy football draft literally hours before kick. That's ballsy, man. Yeah. So uh, on the West Coast swing here, we were trying to do it in L.A. And between L.A. and Arizona, a lot of guys just had families. And, you know, it's a, obviously a popular spot. You know, the people from there or people living in Arizona. We really wanted to have as many, if not everybody, be able to be there. Um, we honestly thought about doing it on a flight out there because, once again, everybody was there. But, you know, just logistically, it wasn't going to work. So everybody said, what do you guys think about just getting a conference room and watching the opening night game, you know, throwing a baseball game on while we're drafting, you know, grab some food. Everybody loved it. So um, we got done at like 7.15 Eastern time and had an hour to set your lineup. You didn't even need to scavenge the waiver wire because, you know, right. nobody was hurt. And you just go watch the game. You're good to go. So first play uh, was really good. Everybody who had either – David Montgomery or those guys were just asking for some points right away. All right. So what pick did you have? Do you have a teammate? Give me the rundown. Yeah. So I had the six pick. 
Uh, when Flair right got ahead. traded over here, uh, August, obviously August 1st, you know, he wasn't in the league. Uh, I had heard that he was a big fantasy football guy. So I was like, Hey, you can jump on my team. Let's do this. So, uh, we had a six pick. We ended up with, uh, we took Saquon Barkley at six. Uh, we wanted a running back. We went Saquon instead of a wide receiver. Um, we got a little hesitant on Kelsey, not really knowing what was going to happen there. That was our guy from the get go though. Um, and then we ended up not taking them. But I think the team ended up good. But, you know, just as well as anybody, you really don't win the league on draft night. So hopefully we just didn't lose it. I had the uh, I had the sixth pick as well. And my God, my my brain is like malfunctioning right now. But I did take a running back. <laughs> um, How many teams do you have? I only have one because I work for the league. I'm only allowed to play in one for less than two hundred fifty dollars. So, oh, yeah. got it. OK. See, whereas I didn't in the, know that. That makes sense. Yeah, in Major League Baseball, they don't care if you're a degenerate gambler in other sports. <laughs> in the NFL, we have strict rules that we adhere to. So just – and by the way, you can oh, let everybody man. in on a little secret about what Sundays in the dugout look like during during the fall. Nobody is up on the rails. Um, You know, that's – we were talking about this actually a couple of weeks ago because – you know, just about everybody who's, you know, bounced around or even been in one spot, right? You've been on a team that kind of stinks and a team that doesn't stink um, unless you're lucky and you're on winning teams all the time. But um, when you're on a team that's winning, bouncing in and out of the locker room, checking football scores is, you know, you can kind of hide that. Um, but I've been on a couple of teams as well that when you're losing and you got guys that are checking scores, it gets even more frustrating, honestly, because you're already not where you want to be. Um, it's it makes it kind of tough, but everybody's trying to do it discreetly. Um, you know, you're really it's normally the starting pitchers that's kind of going in. I've done this before where you go in, I come back out. You know who is a big, a big culprit of this was Trevor Plouffe. No, All he right? wasn't. Tre no, no, he didn't go in because he was playing, right? But I would go in and I would be the guy who was responsible for telling Dozier and Plouffe. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was anybody else. That was normally the guys. I would come out and I would have the rerun in my head of who has scored and what were the scores, right? So I'd give them the rundown. I was like, all right, uh, since the last time, McCaffrey just got another touchdown in about 20 yards. You got a touchdown coming out of Julio Jones. Matt Ryan threw it. It's like I had to give them the rundown of, uh, of what we had there. But, um, you know, it's fun. But, you know, you try to keep a lot of that to a minimum, um, you know, especially if you're you know a losing team who's kind of been struggling through the year a little bit. That's good stuff, though, man. And Dozier was a huge, uh, huge Saints fan, if I remember correctly, right? Oh, Big yeah. Ryan I had, had to update him on the Saints. That's for yeah. sure. He just wanted to know the score of that game. Yeah. Uh, but you're you're from Indiana. So are you are you Colts, dude? Yep. I uh, I had my Andrew Luck jersey that I wore uh, to the draft last night. And we ended up getting Jonathan Taylor on a flyer in like the seventh or the eighth round. So we okay. do have Deion Jackson backing him up in case JT – uh, is either traded or doesn't play, but I got my Taylor jersey that I'm going to wear on the flight since he's on the squad. So um, I didn't, I didn't really want to represent it last night. Uh, I'm hoping, hoping he shows up here in the next few weeks and and uh, helps the Colts a little bit this year because I think they got a little bit of promise. But we'll see what happens. Do you still have a Peyton Manning jersey? So I'm trying to think back. I was I was talking with Elizabeth when she was you know sending these out. Um, I don't know that I have a Manning jersey, but the guy that I like to root for was Dallas Clark. He oh, was the tight yes. end at the number time. Number 44, the tight number end out 44, of Iowa. Right. So he, you know, we had the same number for a while. Uh, and I've got the the Super Bowl jersey from I don't know if it's an actual Super Bowl jersey, but it has the logo on it, right? Right. Uh the the white Super Bowl logo jersey from 2006. So uh that was a good year for me, uh being at Mizzou freshman year, watching the Colts win the Super Bowl. Uh, so you didn't make the trip to Miami. You and a bunch of the baseball boys didn't hop in and go drive from no, Columbia no. to South Beach. <laughs> no, that was uh, that was not in the budget for a, for a college freshman at the time. Got it. I covered that Super Bowl. This is back when I was hosting the Best Damn Sports Show. Period. And we would take the show Monday through Friday. It was not. I did not stay for the game. Let's just say I had way too much fun in South Beach. <laughs> I moved my flight up. I was like, I got to get back to LA. Or, oh man, I was. Uh, we had a couple guys on the team at Mizzou that were Bears fans, so uh, oh. it was that was a fun one. Oh, that is nice. That is yeah. nice. Who do you root for baseball wise when you grow up in Indiana? In Indiana, 
Uh, my dad was a big uh, Reds fan. So that was the closest team, hour and 45 minutes from the house. Um, I remember that there would be times mostly on, you know, Fridays um, when I wasn't playing baseball, but every now and then we would just, he'd get home from work at, you know, 4.45 or 5. He'd be like, hey, let's drive down to Cincy for a game. Uh, and we would pop down. He was a big Red Machine fan in the 70s. So, uh, you know, that's where his love for the game came. And that kind of transferred onto me uh, before I got to be, six five and a lot slower and not a good hitter uh barry larkin was who i wanted to be so oh, yeah uh, played a lot of shortstop and uh so barry larkin was my guy and then uh a good family friend of ours um jake fox played for the cubs sure. so i looked up to him as a kid and became a cubs fan going into college so uh not the best move being a cubs fan in columbia missouri but uh you know had to had to support my buddy there okay uh when they won it all in 2016 even though you were technically competing against them was there any sort of joy uh no the the cubs fan uh kind of went away as soon as i was drafted and, and into the twin system that's not exactly uh something that you want to publicize i feel like when you get drafted by a team you're like oh yeah i'm a cubs fan um yeah. you know and then you end up playing the cubs but um no it wasn't wasn't too many ties at the time i think he had actually bounced around either with yays you know after that um <clears throat> And, and uh, was away from the Cubs at the time. But, um, I mean, cool to see him win, obviously, just because they hadn't won in a while. But, you know, no uh, no heartstrings being pulled at that time. More of the show coming your way. But first, let's talk about the time of year, right? Kids are back in school. You're still jam-packed with work. I know for me, September and October, because of the start of the NFL season and the baseball playoffs, it is the busiest time of year. So I don't have my usual time to go to the grocery store, go shop for my food, prepare a dinner that's going to take, you know, 45 minutes or I don't have the time. And Factor knows that as well. It is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. It can help you fuel up fast with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals that delivers straight to your door. So I'm talking about saving time. You're going to eat well. You're going to stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Once again, we all know we're too busy to cook. Some of us love doing it. Maybe have a shot over the weekend to do it. But during the week, there's just too much stuff going on. So you don't have time to go to the grocery store. You definitely don't have time to chop and to dice and to slice. and to, uh, it, it makes my head hurt even just thinking about it. So you need to adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. You can choose from 34 plus weekly flavor pack, fresh, never frozen meals. They're ready to eat in just two minutes. Now, if you want a little bit more in your game, you can level up with Gourmet Plus options, prepared to perfection by chefs, ready to eat in record time. Or you could treat yourself to upscale meals, premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, asparagus, and oh so much more. So what do you have to do? It's pretty simple. Head on over to factormeals.com slash rose50. Use that code rose50 to get 50% off. That's the code ROSE50 at factormeals.com slash ROSE50. Going to get half off. Your belly will appreciate it. Talk a little bit about your squad. I think you guys have been the story of the year in baseball. Um, listen, last year was a monumental leap for these guys, and, and you weren't there. You were in Texas. You were in Philly. But I, I just think for them, for this organization to take the next step that you have has been really, really impressive. And I got to be honest with you, I'm going to be truthful here. I'm shocked because in the offseason, I was like, y'all go get Carlos Rodon. Like, if you guys are ready to take a next step, go get a badass free agent pitcher. They signed you, and I was like, okay, good move. Good move. Quality vet. Going to help out younger guys. But I want a stud on top of that. And then when they didn't, I was mad. I was like, damn it. Like, you're close. Let's do this. Why has this backfired on me and worked for you guys? <laughs> um, you know, I I didn't know much about how the Orioles got to where they were, you know, at the end of last year, right? Being in the NL, um, we didn't see them. We only heard about how good they were in the second half. You know, they were the best team in the American League after the All-Star break. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't know much about them. And then, um, you know, I signed pretty early and, you know, saw all the the talk about, you know, the rumors and stuff. Um, so I had no idea the pitchers that were already in this organization. Um, and then I get to spring training and I'm like, man, these guys are so good, right? Like all these young guys, 
uh, Rodriguez, you've seen what he's done here since he's been called up. The the kid just he works super hard and he's got it. Um, you know, Kyle Bradish, honestly, um, with a good month here, Kyle Bradish is going to finish in the top five of the Cy Young voting. And if he doesn't, I think it's a crime. Mm-hmm. Like the kid's been nasty. Um, you know, he had an, an early, you know, he got hit by a, a line drive in Texas in his first start or second start. Um, I mean, the guy's just been nasty. Uh, and then Dean Kramer, who had a really great year last year, has thrown really well this second half. Um, you know, they traded for Cole Irvin, and then obviously we get Flair. But in spring training, um, you know, I could kind of see that there's just a lot of young guys in the system that are just really good. So, you know, Mike Elias, I didn't know him very well, obviously. Um, but, man, you could just kind of see the inner workings of everything. You know, they've had a plan since 2009, 2019 when they got here. Um, and, you know, you could just kind of see it come together, honestly. In spring training, I don't know what all of our expectations were, right? You know, everybody wants to win the World Series. You want to, you know, make it to the playoffs and do all that. Um, but as spring training went on, I could just tell that something was different. You know, obviously, these young hitters are studs. We can get to them. In, in a moment as well, but the, the pitching staff from the bullpen on, it was, it was pretty easy to see that these guys had the stuff. And, and once they just get the experience, they're going to take off. Uh, Felix Bautista has been as good as any reliever the last two years. And right now you don't have him. We don't know if you'll have him. It, it doesn't sound, the prospects don't sound great. Um, what does that mean? Particularly when you get to October to not have the guy at the end of the bullpen? Yeah, you know, um, I think as much of a of a team, you know, uh, we can feel a missing piece, right? You know, he's he's the guy. He's one of those guys that the other team looks at the inning and looks at the score and knows that they don't want to face him in the ninth, so they better get something done in the seventh or the eighth, right? That's a game changer. Um, but I think just as much as that physical presence, you know, there was we won the game that night. Um, but you could tell, right? Like there, there was a, a different feeling in the locker room the next few days because he's a big part of this team. And he has been for a long time now with, with the last two years, like you said. So, um, you know, but thankfully, um, I think what everybody's done is we've just kind of reinforced those guys in the bullpen and let them know, like, hey, nobody needs to be Felix Bautista. One, because I don't know that anybody in the league can do what he does. Um, but we have a really good bullpen we got a lot of guys who have thrown the ball really well. And we've got guys who aren't even here right now who have thrown really well. Mike Bauman was just really good for us all year. um, And he's not here right now. So if something happens, we have guys who are really good, you know, waiting to come up and help too. But um, a lot of credit goes to those guys down there the last couple of weeks who've just been picking up the slack. You know, Fuji is nasty. um, And when he is, when he's on, he's the closest thing to Felix that's probably in the league. Um, and he's been really good. Cano, uh, though him and him and Bautista are really close. And, um, I think that was something that he probably had to work through a little bit, um, just mentally, you know, just not having his buddy out there, but he's been awesome. You guys have seen that story. What a cool story for him to be an all-star this year. Um, and then we've got a couple of lefties, CNL, who was just nasty all year last year has thrown really well the last three or four months. And he was somebody that, you know, when he got back to last year's form, Man, he was a big shot in the arm for that bullpen too, um, and I know I feel like I'm running through the whole bullpen, but you know, just to kind of let you know where our team is, we know that we have a really good bullpen. Yeah, does Felix make it better? For sure, he does. We don't know what's going to happen, but um, you know, we're really thankful that we got seven or eight guys down there that are really good. Uh, the everyday lineup is just littered with guys that are young studs, future all stars, future MVP candidates, maybe even present day MVP candidates. And it starts with Adley behind the plate. You've thrown to a lot of catchers. What is it that makes him special that we don't see as as everyday baseball fans that you as an insider appreciates more than anything? Oh man. Um you know I've been like you said, I've been fortunate to throw to, to some you know big name guys between Mao or Real Muto, Jason Castro, Suzuki, Trevino who won a platinum glove like I've been really fortunate through my career to have those guys. And I get asked quite a bit to stack up Adley in that group. Right. Um, and offensively he is as good as any of them. Is he gonna, 
hit 340 like Maurer did. I don't know. Uh, I think he has the tools to do it and the tools to do it from both sides of the plate, which is ridiculous. Um, catching wise, he is an awesome receiver. He blocks as well as anybody that I've, that I've thrown to. And he finds way to ways to block pitches that have no business being blocked. Um, he has, he has one of the more interesting personalities to me on the team. Like he's the same guy every single day. And, um, you know, there, there's quite a few stories that I could share that I don't know if Adley wants me sharing just because of the quirkiness of his personality. But I don't think the more that I've been around this team, I don't think that it was a coincidence that when he gets called up, that this locker room performs better and that the team plays better last year. Um, I know that sounds crazy to people who maybe don't have um, much knowledge of how the locker room works, but um, the record since he's been here has been really good. And he just has a personality that lifts people around him um, and that, that brings energy into the room pretty quickly. Okay. He's been on this show once before, so he probably won't mind. Give me one quirky story. Just <laughs> All right. All right. So this just happened. It seems so, but this just happened the other day, right? So we're in Arizona, and um, I think Skip needed a, a clarification on something from Brian Onora on, on a tag play or, or something, right? So Brian comes over to the dugout, and he's talking to Skip. Adley goes out. I don't remember if he was DHing or pinch hitting, but he goes up to the on-deck circle. He's at the top step. And as Brian Onora is walking away from the dugout, um, Adley goes, Hey, Brian. And, and like Brandon Nor whips around and like, yeah, he like walks over and he goes, Oh, just wanted to say hi. And Brian's like, all right, good to see you, Adley. And he like turned around. He had no idea what to do. And I'm watching Adley and he's just like, you can tell that he knows he caught him off guard. It happened exactly how he wanted it to happen. And I don't know if anybody else on the bench saw it, but I asked Adley after the game, I was like, did you say anything else other than to, to hi to Brian and Nora? Because if you didn't, that's just so Adley. I mean, he just he's just different. And he, he's uh he's the same kid every single day. And it's just like that. I love it. I love it. Today's episode of the Rose Rotation sponsored by these guys at Shady Rays. I want you to take on the sun with gear that is built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with these premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. Did you know that Shady Rays offers a world-class product just as good as any expensive pair ever worn, but they keep money in your pocket? They got durable frames. They got extremely clear optics. They look great, by the way. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. That's right. If you lose these bad boys, if you break them, even on day one of ownership, they will replace the glasses. You call up, you say, I can't believe it. I sat on my shades and they, they'll stop you. Rose, we don't care. We got your address on file. We're going to send you a new pair of shades. Well, don't you want to hear my? No, they don't want to hear it. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. This is great. ShadyRays.com. Use the code Rose. You're going to get 50% off two plus pair of polarized sunglasses. And while you're at ShadyRays.com, the offer also applies to the custom Jimmy and Jake collab shades. Did you know that? We've talked about them. I tried them on at Floorball. They are amazing. You might not be as cool as Jimmy and Jake, but you can look as cool thanks to Shady Rays. I think, however, there's an issue. I, I don't know what it is. We know he hugs his pitchers, but you guys don't have a complete game this year. So don't you, as starting pitchers, feel left out of the Adley hug game? So, uh, all right, another Adley story. All right, so no, we don't. I mean, yes, we do, because we'd like to throw a complete game. Don't get me wrong, right? That's that's the goal every time out there. But um, we get to see Adley after every half inning as we're walking off the field, right? Adley comes up to us. You probably don't see it on TV all the time. Fist bump, handshake you know, slap on the backside, whatever he wants to do. Right. Um, I've never had a catcher do that in my entire career. Right. So when I saw it in, even in spring training, uh, we were sitting at our team dinner and I was like, uh, Adley, how long have you been meeting the starting pitcher at the, at the foul line after the inning? He's like, 
Uh, I don't know, probably since like sixth grade. <laughs> what sixth grade? I've never seen a, I've only seen one catcher do this. And I think it was Jan Gomes in Cleveland. That's the only guy I've ever seen do it, right? So the fact that he was doing it in sixth grade already, uh, I said, hey, um, <clears throat> if I ask you not to do that, what, what would you say? And I could tell, like, I put his mind in a pretzel. He was just like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess, I guess I won't do it. And I was like, and the Kyle Bradish goes, well, Gibby, it's okay. He does it after a good inning and a bad inning. I said, exactly. I don't want to talk to anybody after a bad inning and anything that you have to tell me after a bad inning, you can tell me in the dugout 60 feet away from where we are away from cameras. I just want to cool off a little bit. Uh, so that was the day before opening day. So we had a team meeting opening day. He comes up to me uh, and I'm pitching. He comes up to me right after the meeting at four o'clock and he goes, Hey, Gib, uh, if you don't want me to meet you at the foul line today, I, I won't, I just want to know what you want me to do. I was like, Adley, I need you to be yourself, dude. If you want to meet me at the foul, I just meet me at the foul line. I'll, I'll get over it. We'll be all right. Just understand that if I give up a homer and a few runs, I might walk right past you and then we can talk about it in the dugout. Um, but so we we get to see a lot of Adley uh, every single inning. It might not be a hug all the time, but we get to share at least a fist bump or a smile about every half inning. I love it. I love it. He is just a, he is a superstar and a great kid. And I think we're we're fortunate to have him in this game. Um, it's interesting you brought up, you know, if you give up a homer or whatever. I was watching your start against the Halos the other night. You threw really well in six innings. You did give up, I think, a two-run homer. And the lights started flashing, and then the camera came back to you. And I always thought to myself, man, what the hell does it feel like when you give up a homer? Like, are you mad? Are you angry? Are you embarrassed? What are the – what's it feel like to give up a major league homer? Oh, man. Um, it doesn't – I mean, thankfully when you're winning the game, it's different. But <clears throat> um, it never feels good. Uh, and I think that's why you see – I know people get called old school or, you know, whatever you want to say when you give up a homer and you get mad. Um, but it doesn't feel good, right? You just – you lost the biggest form of competition in the biggest way. So the fact when tempers flare after, you know, bat flips and stuff like that, does isn't really shouldn't be surprising because it's not fun. Um, it, normally I like to uh, see the replay unless I know that it was a pitch right down the middle. I want to see the replay, you know, while he's running around the bases just to see if it was a pitch that I executed. Um, that's just where my mind goes first. And when I saw that pitch, the fact that it was a whole ball below the zone and a two and one count and a really good changeup. And that moment, I was like, man, that was a really good swing. The fact that he took that pitch, I mean, that was pretty good. Um, I know Renhifo has been really hot, um, but I don't, that might be one of the first changeups down there that has been hitting out this year uh, for me. So, um, but mentally, once I normally like to get a ball back quickly from the home plate umpire so that I can kind of get it and get ready. And then really, you're trying to just get your mind and you figure out who's coming up next. And you try to get your mind on that first pitch. Because if you're thinking about that last one, um, and that's maybe why I like to see the replay, right? You you see it, you get it out of your head, and and then you move on to the next pitch. Because, you know, it's real easy to give up another one if you're not, you're not focused on this pitch ahead. All right. Appreciate you sharing that. Well, 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 what do you know? Football is back and in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? Well, DraftKings Sportsbook, of course, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Nobody's missing out on the action this season because all DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook and download the app now and use promo code ROSE to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only drop DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code ROSE. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.sot1800gambler.net. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 
Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in, in Ontario. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility, terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Now back to the show. I am curious about this, though, because you just got your 100th win. Congratulations on that. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, if you would, have you ever given up a milestone? Like, I don't think you've given up a 500th homer or a 3,000th hit or anything. And if so, would it bother you? Or would it be kind of cool to be a part of baseball history? Hmm. Um, I was really close on, um, on Pujols. Um, he actually hit his... I think it was 600. I think he hit 600 against the twins in 2019, maybe. Um, I'm trying to remember who he hit it off of. I can't remember, but it was either, I was either the day before it happened or the day after, because I remember because I accidentally hit him in his first at bat and I had given up a homer to him before. Right. So I got booed big time. Because it was like off the elbow, it was up and in. It was a sinker that completely got away from me, and I remember because I asked the clubby to have him come out after the game because I wanted to apologize to him because I he had hit a homer before, and I knew he was either chasing or just got the milestone, and I wanted him to know like there was no intent behind me like doing that. It was just a complete miss, right? Um, but I don't know that I've given up. I don't think it's I've ever given up a homer milestone. I know I've given up a first hit. Um, I don't know if I've given up a first homer either. I might have been able to avoid all those, Rosie. I can't I can't remember that. Well, no, no. Okay, then let's get back to the pools <laughs> thing. So he comes out of the clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how did that discussion um, go? Yeah, he comes out and he's just one of the nicest human beings ever. I'm sure you've ran into him. Um, just one of the nicest people ever in the game. And as soon as he came out, he had a big smile on his face. He's like, hey, brother, how you doing? I was like, first off, that was, I mean, the fact that he came out smiling, I just hit you in the hand. Um, I was like, listen, Albert, I know you don't know me really well, but I just wanted to apologize. Like, there was no intent in that. I know, and once again, I, I don't remember if he was chasing or, or, or already done it. I said, I just want you to know, like, that was not intentional whatsoever. I know you'd hit one off of me before. And I wasn't even trying to go in to keep you from hitting a homer. The fact is, I was trying to go down and away with the first pitch sinker, and I lost it. And he goes, no, man, you're good. He's like, I understand. It's like, I, I don't know if he knew anything about me or not, but it's like, it's like he knew already that, you know, I was just going to apologize and I had no intention. So, you know, talked for another minute or so, and he wished me good luck, told me to stay healthy, and that was it. But um, just an awesome human. I love that. Is that the only time you've ever apologized to another big leaguer? <clears throat> um, it happened this year once, uh, but that one was on the field. Um, I almost hit Bader in the face in New York, um, but that one was on the field. I think that's probably the only time uh, off the field. The Bader one was interesting because this year, um, obviously the pitch clock is just, there's certain times where it's really different, right? And even though we have step offs when a guy's on base to reset the clock, you don't think about that for the most part, unless you're not even set yet. But um, I just given up a hit. I get back to the mound. I feel like I should have 15 seconds left. I look up, I got five. So I get my pitch. I come set. I check the runner and I go and I just rush through a sinker. I was supposed to be middle, middle, oh, oh, and it almost hits him in the face. Well, he drops the bat. He had just homered the day before, right? He drops the bat. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him, and we followed each other the entire way down the first baseline. Maybe the first time I've ever done like that with a hitter. But he did not look happy, right? And I knew that I didn't do it on purpose. So uh, he goes around the bases, and I, he, had, he had had time to cool off now. you know, um, I think it was like a ground ball to second. So I started moving to first for the third out. He crossed home, just you know, formality. And I, I kind of beelined to him. I was like, hey, you know, Bader. And he looked up at me, and I was like, I just walked over from my glove over my mouth. I said, listen, I just want you to know there was nothing with yesterday, anything, no intent on that. I looked up. I had one second on the clock. I did a slide step, and I just threw the pitch because I, I was out of time. He's like, oh, man, you're good. So um, I know Trevino pretty well. Uh, next day, he wasn't in the lineup, checked on him a little bit. You know, x-rays are negative, so I was good. But 
Um, it's always scary, man, whenever you get up and in like that, especially when it's somebody who, you know, as a team, you know, you're really not ever trying to hit anybody in the head. But, um, you know, when it's somebody that's completely unintentional and, and you know, just kind of a surprise to everybody, I don't know. I like to check and make sure they're all right. Good job by you. Thanks for sharing that. A um, couple more here because I know you want to go eat breakfast. But uh, we just came out with a report that they're going to keep the pitch clock for the playoffs. Are you disappointed? Um, had you asked me in spring training, I probably would have said yes um, because I think everybody loved how the World Baseball Classic played out. Um, just we all know in the game, anticipation – and time is actually really good in the playoffs, right? Like the pitcher gets to think, the hitter gets to think, you end up with big moments that don't feel rushed. All right, so when we saw the World Baseball Classic just two weeks after finding out that we had a pitch clock, it was like a breath of fresh air, like, man, isn't that awesome? But then the more I thought about it, um, I think there's teams, pitchers, hitters who have been impacted by the pitch clock one way or the other. Um, negatively, positively, could have cost you a game, could have cost you at bats, whatever. And uh, I just don't know that it would be, you know, fair to those teams to go through 162 games, possibly have a negative impact one way or the other on the playoff picture, and then you get to the playoffs and you're like, all right, back to normal. Here we go. Take as much time as you want. Um, I think it's, I think it's got to be, it's got to be uniform. So now that we're in it. Um, you know, I don't, I don't even think you should add time. Like, I think as much as I would love more time, right. I would love to have it be 20 seconds with guys on, with nobody on base. I would love to have a step off, you know, once in a bat, just like a hitter gets a timeout. I think those changes great. Um, but I think now that we're in it, you got to leave the pitch clock. And I think that was really the only decision to be made. Okay. Uh, you're trying to get back to the world series. You were there with the Phillies a season ago. Um, you're a guy who's seen some tremendous success in this league. You're a former first round pick. As I mentioned, I'm a, you know, a hundred plus career wins now. Um, you're also a guy that has struggled at times, whether that's with your health or on the field. Did you have a chance to enjoy the World Series? I know you just threw one inning, but were you out there and did you look around where you're like, man, this is the pinnacle? Uh, I think I did that every single day, Rosie. Um, you know, even in the playoffs, you know, before last year, um, was in the playoffs in 2019, but as a reliever, you know, just coming off some really bad health stuff and thankful, you know, to be on the playoff roster really. Um, but you know, we got swept by the Yankees, so really didn't get a chance to enjoy that a whole lot. So last year was just soaking up every moment, man. Um, you know, when, when Tomper told me I was on the playoff roster, um, super thankful. Um, you know, I, I thought there was something that I could add to the bullpen if, if there was a starter that struggled or, you know, trying to save the bullpen in certain games, um, you know, if needed. So, you know, super thankful to be down there for that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was soaking up every moment, you know, um, a lot of cool memories from, from October. And then, you know, I, it, it's different when you join a bullpen, right? You know, bullpen kind of get their, they're like their own group. You know, they throw together, they stretch together. Uh, they spend every game together, right? So as a starter being thrown down there, it can be a little different. You know, I think having, you know, the experience and being, you know, eight or nine years in, you know, I think, you know, it was a little different for me. But for instance, in Philly, everybody, when you see videos of those guys, they're all sitting on the bench, you know, back in the back of the bullpen, right? Underneath cover, you know, it's a little quieter back there. They can see the TVs. This was my first like real postseason and, and first real like bullpen experience. I took my you know bar stool high chair and I sat on the front fence every single game. Sure, I was probably blocking somebody's view. I asked if I was okay there, but I wanted to see the field. You know, I wanted to see like plays happen. Uh Brad Hand, uh, next game, like in Philly or that game, he's like, you know what? I haven't sat here all year. Let's try it out. Brad Hand and I sat there every single game at home. And uh, just experiencing a crowd, that was something different. You know, we were sitting there when Reese and Hart, you know, went deep into left center against the Padres and just seeing the place erupt, um, you know, running in from the bullpen, celebrating a series, like uh, the actual, you know, each series win. 
it's nothing like it. It's uh, it's something that you know weighed on the decision you know this off season a lot. You know, I'm thankful to be coming right off the World Series and mentioning the teams. Hey, what are we doing to get back to the World Series? And um, you know, something that I asked everybody because just was was something that once you experience it, you want to get back. Dude, you're gonna get a ball in it to start a game. Yeah, I, I don't have a postseason start yet, so. Uh, I've been in there a couple times and, uh, that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. You know, it's, there's just, I don't know the, I, I really enjoy the whole part, right. The, even the preparation, like looking into scouting reports, all that stuff is a lot of fun for me. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm trying to really, uh, really enjoy and tell these young guys like, and you can get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the season, you know, the ups and downs I've had my ups and downs been through it. Right. And I think that's part of what I can share with guys, you know, guys who, get options or guys that are coming back up, like, you know, sharing some of that experience because it hasn't just been, you know, you know, shiny things and roses for me my whole career. It's been some ups and downs with some struggles. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, one guy who has constantly been at the top of his game, although he has obviously had some injury issues and a few years where he hasn't done as well as he would want is Bryce Harper. Now I am such a fanboy. I got to be honest with you. It's probably part of the reason I grew out this crappy beard that I've got. Because <laughs> even though now he ditched it. He just um, shaved it. So I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah, I don't know. No, I'm keeping this one. At least for the start. <laughs> uh, he's one of these guys that is like Tiger Woods, LeBron James. Like, we've known him since high school. Like, you know him by just one name. Like, Bryce. Like, we get it. Uh, is it even more amazing to see it every day? Yeah, when uh, when Harp's going good, um, oof, I'm, I'm not sure that I've been on a team with another player like him. Really, um, you just you just kind of know that when he's going good, he's coming through in the big spot. Um, you know, he's driving the ball into the gap, and you know you're going to get some emotion and a celebration out of him. Um, you know, he's a uh, he's he's a really special teammate too. You know, I mean, I think there's. You know, everybody goes through struggles. Everybody goes through times where, you know, you either say things or you do things when you end up apologizing to a teammate because, you know, you just emotion gets caught up or whatever. But, um, you know, he's just he's a different person when you're in the same locker room uh, than he is when you see him across the field. You know, you see the competitor, you see, you know, as a visiting player, you see, you know, maybe you know a little bit of a showman, you see a different player. And then when you get on the same team, um he's just one of the guys, you know, he's, he's, but he's a superstar, right. Um, you know, so it's, he obviously, you know, carries a little bit different energy and a different, um, you know, just magnitude around him. But, um, you know, that was, that was really fun being, you know, getting kind of to see, you know, who he is because you just, you don't really get a, a, a chance to look at that and, and see that when you're on the other side of the field. Uh, finally, you're having one of your best seasons. You are 35. As I mentioned, you've got four kids. You signed a one-year deal. How do you move about this now? I mean, if you're healthy, do you want to keep playing? Or is it time to just shut it down and just be dad and a husband, which is great. But you miss a lot of stuff, man, when you play this game. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, I mean, this year has been a lot of fun. You know, it's had, once again, it's it's kind of uh, like a lot of my other seasons. It has its ups and downs, right? Um, you know, I've had probably – four or five starts that have just been probably about as frustrated as I've been in uh, about any start in my career. You, know, you go out there and feel like you can't get guys out. Uh, and then I've had a lot of starts, thankfully, where I felt really good and, um, you know, you throw well. But, um, you know, it's uh, it, those are discussions that um, as I've gotten older, you just you organically have with, you know, Elizabeth, and my wife, and, you know, you figure it out, you know, kind of what you want to do. The kids still, you know, we all, like you said, we have four kids and our oldest three are nine, six, and four. And uh, they just have a blast at the field, obviously. Um, you know, all of them are now to the point where they're making, you know, memories that they're going to remember. So it's been cool to take them to Camden, which has been always one of my favorite parks as a favorite, as a road player. Um, so it's been cool to have them out there. And um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we were, we were pretty comfortable doing a one-year deal for this year. Um, and I think, you know, as you know, see how my body feels so far, I feel really good. I think, you know, I don't know that I'm someone who wants to play until they're 40 or somewhere maybe like around that number. But 
um, you know, I think when the right situation arises um, for our family, you know, we're going to know it. And, uh, you know, if, if it's somewhere where, you know, we think is good for the family, um, I don't think we'll pass it up. You know, I, I don't know that I'm quite to the point where uh, I want to be done playing yet. Uh, like I said, I still enjoy, you know, the, the preparation side of it, which is a lot of the work, I think, for a starting pitcher. And I feel like whenever I get to the point where I don't enjoy that, I might as well, I might as well just walk away because I'm a guy that needs to prepare, right? You know, I've got five or six pitches that need to play in certain locations and, and um, I need to know where those locations are. And if I'm not doing my homework and I'm not enjoying that part, well then game day is not going to be any fun for me. So, um, you know, I think if that'll be probably my first, my first part, if I'm, if I'm getting annoyed by that, um, and, and not enjoying that, then, then that'll kind of be a, a hint to me. But like you said, uh, this missing the family stuff is tough. You know, this has probably been the worst year for that because now having four, you know, even though we have somebody helping Elizabeth, um, you know, just traveling with four for her is nearly impossible. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's pretty difficult. So probably been the least amount that I've seen my family in, in a season. And that's been, you know, pretty tough, but, um, you know, it's, I don't know, that's a tough question to answer, especially in the middle of a season. Um, but you know, I still feel pretty good physically. So, uh, I think right now we're going to find the right spot and, and go play at least one more year and, and see what happens. But this postseason stuff, when you get in it, it gets a little addicting. I'm sure you've talked to people. It's uh, oh, yeah. it's something that everybody wants to experience at least one more time. Yep, that's great. That's great. Just remember that when you're, you know, wherever you do sign, you could you could be the pace car and just set o- for Otani's number if you want to. You know, he'll go. He'll work off of your number, or you could yeah. just okay. <laughs> drag off of his number. Whatever way you think is yeah. better. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll. Uh, that'll be something I'll think about here in the in the off season. We'll try to make yeah. sure we we get a nice comp there. <laughs> good, good. Listen, man, I do appreciate, it, man. I know that that, that forty two minutes of your time, uh, you know, on a work day is a lot. So I do appreciate it. Go enjoy your breakfast, and uh, go enjoy Boston this weekend and the rest of your season. It has been a phenomenal watch for those uh, those bird fans out there. Thank you. Sounds good. I hope Orioles fans are having fun, man. Because man, this team is we're having a lot of fun. So it's been it's been a great dugout and clubhouse to be a part of, and. Uh, it's been fun coming on and talking to you about it. So thanks for having me on. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I wish you could give me more stuff to use against Ploof, but he is a <laughs> decent guy. That That is a whole nother episode that we can talk about Trevor Ploof. So I, he, I enjoy being teammates with that guy. So I still, I'm glad he's one of the ones that I've kept up with and kept in contact with because he was, he was fun to play with. You know who loves talking about Trevor Ploof? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna let you say it. Trevor Blue. <laughs> it is I knew where you were going. That was good. <laughs> it is the it is the TO I love me some me. I mean, he is just all over it. By the way, what's the name Come of your uh... that hey, that's a tough comp. That's a tough comp right there. Oh, I call it Trevor. I call it to his face too. <laughs> he he knows it. He knows it. What's the name of your fantasy team? Uh let's see. Um we got we're gonna go off so we haven't picked the team yet. We're trying to figure out what the guys we have. So quarterback. Oh man, I'm pulling a blank just like you. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see. We got Rogers at quarterback. Uh, we got Saquon. <clears throat> we got good receivers between Ridley and uh, Alave. Um, man, right. <clears throat> I don't know. We got to, I got to look at the, the guys on the team and try to come up with some, I know you can Google those names and, and kind of get some help, but, I like to have uh, I like to have a little bit of organic going about. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. But we don't have a team there right now. It's to be named later. So I don't think we can leave that because we're in later. It's time to name it. Uh, by the way, um, B. John Robinson was my first pick of the Falcons. There you go. At six. There you go. Was, yeah. It sounds like he's a stud. Yeah. I mean, I'm so bad at this. Like I work in the NFL, and I say the same thing. I'm. I'm in a draft with my family. So it's my brothers, three of my nephews, my two sons, a couple other friends, and I am the worst. And everybody laughs, laughs at me. They just laugh at me. They're like, are you sure you work in the NFL? Because it sure Do you think like that makes it harder for you? Like, what, what do you, what do yeah, you think? Yeah, I overthink it. I overthink it mm-hmm. all. I, over, I have so much information every week for my NFL prep. I get a research packet that's 250 pages. And so, oh. yeah. Oh, man. All right. 
All right. An idiot. Well, scavenge the waiver wire because you're going to know about those moves ahead of time. So you got to use that advantage, that knowledge to your advantage, right? You would think. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> hey, uh, good luck in your fantasy season. Good luck Thank in you. your day job as well. And uh, thanks so that. much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. This was a blast. Yep. Thanks, Rosie. You too, man. You got it. Uh, for our one-of-a-kind producer, the legendary Rob Scirocco and Kyle Gibson of your Baltimore Orioles. I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.